What's going on, Graceville family? Thank you for tuning in for this week's episode. I hope that you've been encouraged by this teaching series. In today's episode, I pray that you would continue to grow a heart that would lead you to dive deeper into understanding what the kingdom of God is. In the meantime, join us in worship. We'll see you soon. God bless.
Hey, welcome back to Graceville TV. Glad all of you can join me again on this special episode. Uh, we are continuing on the series of entering the kingdom of heaven. And today, I'm actually going to touch on a very interesting uh, topic called entering versus inheriting. Now, we, <clears throat> last couple of weeks, we've been talking about entering the kingdom of heaven. But however, we as followers of Jesus, we would know that the Bible talks about entering the kingdom and yet also talk about inheriting the kingdom. So what was Jesus talking about and what does it look like today in our walk with Him? What does inheriting the kingdom with Jesus look like? So I'm going to read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 11. And it says this, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. You know, a lot of us, when we read this part of the Bible, it is hard, isn't it? It's very hard. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God and have sinned. Amen. So it's hard when you read this passage. Some of us may even think, well, I have accepted Christ, but I'm still doing all these things mentioned in this passage. 
So what's happening, Pastor? What is going on? Listen, can I say something to you? First off, there's a difference in entering and inheriting. However, like the prodigal son story, can I assure you this? You never lose your sonship the moment you receive Jesus. And so, <clears throat> once you're justified in Christ Jesus, you're justified in Christ Jesus. Amen? However, there is a process of sanctification or purification that leads to partaking or sharing, that leads to overcoming, that leads to inheritance. So you say, okay, Pastor, I'm more confused now. Well, don't worry, I will explain. You see, in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33, in the New King James Version, Jesus taught us to, he said this, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. The part we want to focus on today is, and his righteousness. So, God is good, amen? We always say that. But He wants us to seek His righteousness, His right standing. Now, how do we even seek that? A lot of us read this passage and we go, how do we, how do we even seek that? Well, I'll let you in on a revelation, okay? His righteousness is knowing His purpose for us. Did you just hear me? His righteousness is knowing His purpose for us. In other words, knowing His will for us. We need to seek His purpose for us. Pure and simple, just seek His purpose. We are all designed and made with a purpose. Listen, only the Maker knows the purpose for things He made. Only God knows the true purpose for making us. To share or to partake or to live out the inheritance with Jesus, we first need to discover our purpose. The question we must ask ourselves is, why am I created? Why am I sent here? Why did Jesus choose me? We must start with the why. Let me let you in on another revelation. We cannot ask the created why they are created. For instance, <laughs> we cannot ask a spoon, spoon, why are you created? Okay, the spoon will not be able to answer. Even if the spoon can speak, he will not be able to answer you that question. Or ask a fan, why are you created? You know, I recently bought a fan, a Dyson fan. Very impressive. But one day, I will ask the people at Dyson why they created that fan. Okay? Even though it's nice right now, but I don't know the purpose of it. Now, you may, it may sound really crazy, but it is true. We need to ask the manufacturer or the designer why the spoon or the fan were created. Like, do you know why is a pen created? A pen. You may say to write. With. Yes, but think about this. Okay, here's something I want to just let you think about. You know, <clears throat> the same pen is also the one that signed a treaty in the Second World War to end the war on the USS Enterprise battleship, which is now anchored in Hawaii. The same pen. The same pen that kids draw with, the same pen that you used to, I don't know, pull out a, a staple with. The function of what is created can only be found if you ask the creator of that particular item. A life without purpose is a wasted life. Meaningless. You can be a multi-billionaire right now listening. I don't know, you might be one. But without purpose, you're unfulfilled. The abundant life that is found in John chapter 10, verse 10, the life that Jesus talked about is one with purpose. That's why Jesus, who knew his purpose, could say, I've come to fulfill the law of Moses and the prophets. Why are you here? I'm going to ask you, why are you here? 
Yes, you may have entered the kingdom. You say, I'm a Christian, I entered the kingdom. Yes, but why? Why are you in the kingdom? Unless and until we discover our purpose, we are like a person on a wooden rocking horse, rocking away. Lots of motion, but going nowhere. <laughs> in other words, not making any progress. Example, you may disagree with me and say, you know what, Pastor, I've made a lot of money. I made a lot of money, Pastor. I'm very successful. I know how to run a business. I know what business is all about. I know where to market my products effectively. I know who to sell to my exact demographics. I even know when to market it. I'm going somewhere. I'm making progress, am I not? Oh, really? <laughs> Let me ask you this. What's the purpose of your business? Why? Did you ask yourself that? You see, you can choose a lot of things in life, but you cannot choose your purpose. Only the creator of all things know the purpose for all things created for. If we don't know why our body is made, I'm asking you right now, why is your body made? If you don't know that, you have not found the actual purpose why your body is made, let me tell you this. Earlier on, we were reading from Corinthians. I'm going to tell you this. You, if you don't know why your body is made or the purpose of sexual relations, the purpose of worship, the purpose of things made, the purpose of alcohol, we will be like the ones mentioned in the passage I read earlier. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11. I'm going to remind you again. Or do you not know what the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor the greedy, nor the drunkards, nor the revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were justified, you were, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. If you don't know the purpose of all those things that I mentioned, you don't even know the purpose why God created your body, let me, let me just tell you this. You will abuse your body through sexual immorality. You will abuse worship and become idolaters. You will abuse your spouse and have adulterous relationship. You will abuse another same-sex person not realizing the purpose of man and woman. Abuse things by stealing because we don't know the purpose of things created. Abuse alcohol and become drunken. Abuse words and become reviler. We don't know why our business is created, for we will swindle people. We will abuse our business. And on and on and on and on. I mean, Paul just gave us a few examples of people not knowing the purpose of those things and themselves. Listen, <laughs> here's something I want to tell you. The word abuse is short for abnormal use. Abnormal use. Take away the normal abuse. When we don't know the purpose of why things, why we are created, we will subject them to abnormal use. In other words, abuse. For instance, time. When we don't know why time is created or purpose of time, we abuse it. And the worst way to abuse time is to waste it. Time is so precious. Our life is finite. Time is so precious. One cannot make time. How many of us are wasting time because we don't know the purpose of why time is created? Listen, in the world we live in, 
we have to ask the original manufacturer of things for the purpose they were designed for. Like a tennis racket, here's an example, like a tennis racket, right? Or a badminton racket. They're both rackets. <laughs> they both are rackets with like a, a, a mesh on one end and a handle on the other. They look kind of the same. But they have very different purposes. And on top of that, we need to go to the original manufacturer to know exactly why they were created that way. How many of you know everything made has a name or a brand on it? Oh yes. An image of the manufacturer is stamped on, for instance, your phones. Just check the back of your shirt or your shoes or the table, look underneath it, or the computer at your house right now, the one you're watching through. There's a brand on there. <laughs> like a Samsung phone. Sorry, I have to mention brands. Or Apple phone, an LG phone. They are all cell phones. But do you call out a Samsung manufacturer, service center, to ask how to work your iPhone? No. We need to call the original manufacturer to find out the true purpose of the functions of the phones. Same with us. We also have a brand on us. That's right. We are made in the image and likeness of God. Stamp. So who should we call to ask about our purpose? The true manufacturer, God himself the creator. Now let's come back to the phone examples. How many of you know how to use every function on your phone? <laughs> I don't. A lot of you out there listening right now, you're going, mm, maybe a few of you, I see a few in, in, in this room that probably know 90% of how to use their phone's functions. But a lot of us, a lot of us out there, we don't know 90% of the functions of your phone. Let's be honest, not too many, right? But you know something? You paid for all those functions when you bought the phone. You paid for them, a lot of money, and we don't use them. Worse, we don't even don't know that they are there. <laughs> or why are they there? The purpose of a phone is primarily for communication, amen? But the functions allows you to expand and deepen that communication. Like the phone, do we know our purpose? Why we're created? Or better, do we know our functions? Mm. Listen, functions and purpose are interrelated. They are interrelated. Unless we know our purpose, we'll never find out the functions we have the true functions. No wonder we go into abnormal use, abuse of our bodies and things. Remember, abnormal use is also known and abbreviated as abuse in the English language. How can we inherit or share what Christ has as an, as an inheritance if we don't know our purpose and eventually our functions? No wonder we abuse what God created because we don't know the true purpose and why He created them for. So, okay, Pastor Tom, you may say, how do I get back on track? You know, I'm off track. How do I get back on track? Well, let's see what our manual, the Bible, says. Hmm. Oh, yes. By the way, all things that are created comes with a manual. I'm guilty of that. I don't read my car manual. I just go into my car and drive it, start the car and drive, put on drive and drive it. Months later, I realize, oh, I have this. Oh, I didn't know I have this. But you paid for that. You paid for that. It was created with functions. Well, let us see what our manual says about us. <laughs> if you don't ever read your manual, you will never know the purpose and functions 
you came with. So you have entered the kingdom, yes? Yes. So now, we have to find out our assignment. Amen. You and I are given assignments. But we may say, well, that's, that's impossible. It's impossible. If God says I'm supposed to do this, that, that's impossible. But wait. Our manual, our Bible says all things are possible with God. But we can argue, well, you might want to argue, well, that's God. But wait, he created you with a purpose in his mind. In his mind, he formed a thought and then he created you. For this assignment, you came with all the functions to carry out this assignment here on earth as it is in heaven. It is our duty through obedience to find out our true purpose. Can I say this? If you have not found out your purpose or found out the purpose why God created you or created man and woman, let's just say this. If you have never found out the purpose of why God created man or woman, if you're a man, if you, you don't know that, you don't know the purpose why God created women, or if you're a woman listening, you don't know what's the purpose of God, you know, why, why, why did God create man? What's the purpose? Can I suggest this to you? Don't get married yet. Mm. That's right, you heard me. If you don't know the true purpose of why trees are created, you should stop the abnormal use of trees. The abuse of trees, like cutting them down solely for timber. Here's an example. Did you know my quest has always been to find out why God created plants? Yeah, that's right. Today, as I become a good student to study the purpose of why plants were created, I've come to understand them a little better and care for them even more. God has not only purposed the plants to produce oxygen for us, but He had hidden so much, so much medicinal quality of plants for us to discover and use. And because I continue to pursue learning about plants and their medicinal quality, I was able over the last 30 years make extracts from plants into herbal supplements to help people around the world improve their health. My encouragement to you today is to ask the question, why to your maker? Our God of the universe, Yahweh. Why did he create you? He who designed us has an original blueprint for our purpose. Each and every one of us, each and every one of us, you too, that's right. You and I and every one of us carry a special purpose from our Creator in us and for us as well. Once you understand the true purpose for things created, including us, we will stop the abuse. Remember, abuse is short for abnormal use. We will become aligned with God's will. And guess what? we will start to inherit what Jesus inherited. Remember, go to the makers of the heavens and the earth and ask him, why? Start asking why. I know you know how. I know you know what, where, when, but ask God why. We cannot ask the created his or her functions. Only the designer knows. Amen. So I hope this helps you understand better on how to inherit the kingdom once you enter. Once you discover the true purpose of why God created you and the things around you, you will be able to use them normally as purpose by God. And this, my friend, is carrying out His will. Hope you are blessed. And until next time, I'm Pastor Tom saying, bless you and bless your family. 
Hey everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed that teaching from Pastor Tom Chin on entering versus inheriting. If you did enjoy the video, please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, as well as check out the other teaching episodes. If you'd like to connect with us, head on over down to the description box below, where you can find our Instagram, our Facebook, as well as our website. And you can also see our Naturally Supernatural podcast website down below, where you can head on over to listen. And until next time, everybody.